with us. We are so glad to have you. Uh, you are welcome here, and we just thank the Lord for you and everyone else. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. I hope you sense the presence of the Lord here in this place, knowing God, knowing the Lord. That's what's important. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if um, you could turn to the book of Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. I'm going to minister a word here today that's really, really speaking to my heart. Genesis chapter 8. And if you can find verse 6. Chapter 8 of Genesis and verse 6. Praise the Lord. It's a new paragraph in that chapter. Amen. Everybody there? All right. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. And also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. And she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. And then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. I'd like to minister a little bit here this morning on the thought, the text, the dove found no resting place. The dove found no resting place. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the gift of God. I thank God for the promise of the Father. I thank God for the power. I thank Him. God has so much for us and so much is available to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that God has a banqueting table spread full of the best of things of the spirit world. God has everything and everything is in him and through him and of him. We have that opportunity to receive that of God. Uh, you can't blame somebody else. Uh, you, it's, it's our responsibility. It's us. We have the choice to say yes to God or to say no. We have the choice as to desire what God has or we can say no, we don't want what God has. That is simply up to you. That is up to us. But I pray this morning, please, that you'll open your heart to the Lord. Let Him speak. Please let God speak today, and may his church be glorified and edified. Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for speaking this word into my heart. And I pray, God, for the unction. I pray for the anointing. I pray for the power. I pray for the fire. I pray, God, that you would help us to be able to minister the word of the Lord, that you would be glorified. We do nothing to harm your word. And I pray that your people would be so filled with you and your presence and your word and your spirit, Father, that we would know as we leave this place that we had been in the glory of God. I thank you, Father. Give every heart a desire to worship you and to praise you and to seek you. And I ask this in Jesus name and everybody said amen and amen and you made me seated my dear friends in the Lord I love you and I appreciate all of you and God bless all of you the dove found no resting place I came across this verse so oh, several weeks ago and it just popped out of the scriptures into my heart it's my prayer that this message uh, would penetrate our hearts and cause uh, a deep deep moving and yearning of for the Holy Spirit in our lives uh, we just can't think that we can function without the Holy Spirit uh, we can cannot live as business as usual without the indwelling presence of God. There is no alternative to the life of the Spirit. Many want the flavor of Pentecost without experiencing true Pentecost themselves. The life flow of the Holy Spirit is vital for every child of God. Without Him, we are powerless. Without the presence of God, we become mechanical. And if we become mechanical, then we're really not being real anymore. We just go 
through the motions, but we don't mean it within our hearts. Uh, that's what happens when we become uh, uh, indifferent towards God, or, or, or that's what happens when we begin to shrivel up or dry up, if you will. Without the Holy Spirit, I'm afraid that we will become passive and lackadaisical and lukewarm and indifferent towards God to where our hearts are no longer in it. And I believe every one of you know what I'm talking about when you're, there have been times when your heart is in it and you love God and you're worshiping and you're seeking and you're praising and you're pressing in. But then there are times when you might uh, just go through the motions of the day and your heart really is not in it. But can I say today that the Holy Ghost makes a difference? Oh, yes, he does. See, he makes a difference in our Christian living, doesn't he, church? He makes a difference in our Christian conduct. He makes a difference in our attitudes and our demeanor. He makes a difference in our praying and in our worship. A church full of the Holy Ghost knows how to praise God. Do I have a witness there today? They know how to touch heaven. They know who God is, and uh, for they are connected to the heavenlies uh, by the power of His Spirit. Uh, thank the Lord for Pentecost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the active agent of the Godhead. Amen. Not ashamed of it, my beloved. The church uh, is the creation of uh, the Holy Spirit. On that day of Pentecost, He came upon them, 120, baptized in the Holy Ghost, went out as a flame of fire, preaching the gospel, turning the known world upside down. Uh, it's a community of believers who owe their religious life from first to last to the Spirit. Uh, apart from Him, there can be neither Christian nor church. Uh, the Christian religion is not institutional, uh, but experiential. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, we can know doctrine till we're blue in the face, but without experience, it's not doing us a lot of good. Uh, it's not by an ordained class, uh, neither is it in ordinances and sacraments. Uh, it's not a fellowship of common interest in culture or in virtue or in service. Uh, membership is by spiritual birth, rebirth, for Jesus said uh, that you must be born again. Uh, the role of membership is kept in heaven. Christ is the door. Uh, he knows those who are his uh, and they know him. Uh, the church role and the Lamb's book of life are not always identical. The Bible says no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, the command to tarry in the city until there came the endowment of power from on high proves that the one essential equipment of the church is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Nothing else avails for the real work of the church. For much that is undertaken by churches today, he is not necessary. Hear me out. The Holy Ghost is no more needed to run bazaars or social clubs or institutions and picnics than he is to run a circus. These may be necessary additions of the modern church, but it is not for power to run these things that we have need to tarry. Turn me up, please, Brother John, a little bit so I can hear what's going on up here. These things can and do function without the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, yeah, you can have all kinds of things going on in the church without the Holy Spirit. But power is needed and necessary if the church is going to be effective. Can I get an amen out of that? He is needed if the church or the Christian is going to have impact against the kingdom of darkness and to advance the kingdom of God's Son. To win the lost out there. Listen, church, and to reach souls. We must have the power of the Holy Spirit. We must have power from on high to reach those that are in darkness and sin, those that are bound and addicts here well, on the other side of the world that are in darkness. Your little religious gimmick is not going to touch or move anybody. You've got to know Him. He must know you, and we must be filled with the Holy Spirit and power from on high. Oh, how we need Him. Yes, church, we do need Him. Yes, Christian friend, we need Him. Come, Lord God, with power. Come with grace. Come with your presence. Come and melt away the dross out of our lives. Come and burn up all the flesh. Come and expose what is false and reveal what is of God. Come and glorify the Son. Come and lift up the name of Jesus Christ. The name above all names where every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 
Amen. We cannot say that Jesus Christ is Lord without the Holy Ghost. All people might be able to say it with their lips and with their voice without God. But listen to me. What that means is that we that are saved, we that know God, we that are born again, we can say it with assurance. We can say it with conviction. We've never seen him with our physical eyes, but we have seen him. We know he's real. We know he's Lord. We know he's alive. We know he's coming back. There is a conviction. That's the Holy Ghost inside of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up his name. Holy Spirit, come and convict men of sin and draw every heart to their knees to cry out to the living God. Where is that today? Where are those that are coming to the altar, coming to the foot of the cross, crying out to God? Uh, The Bible says that he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Come and have your way, Lord. Come and be glorified. Come and draw sinners to the cross. Come and ignite hearts on fire for you. Glory to God. Come quickly. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come in our lives and come in our churches. Amen. Cross all those denominational lines and come and move upon our hearts and change us and melt us. And cause us to worship and to cry out to you and to pray. Cause the people today in the world that hunger after God more than the things of the world. Hunger after the songs of Jesus than the worldly things that uh, the songs of the world produce that bring no life. Oh, but come. Come the word of life. Come in this service. Come to today, Lord. Hallelujah. And stir us. Move us. Do something with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If we don't start moving a little bit, amen, we get a little comfortable sometimes where we're sitting. We don't start moving a little bit. I'm going to bring my lighter next week. Amen. Put a little fire under us. Hallelujah. First one that falls asleep, you're going to get lit up. Amen. I'm going to light you up. Amen. You'll never be the same. You'll never sit again. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise God. I think we'd rather have the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think we'd rather have the Holy Ghost. I just have to say that we are a Holy Ghost believing Pentecostal church. And I'm not ashamed of it. And I'm not ashamed of Him. I just want to declare it to you. I know that people may not come here because they say, oh, but they're Pentecostal. Well, what's wrong with that? You ought to be thankful. Amen. If someone says, what church do you go to? I go to Word of Life Christian Church. Oh, I've heard about that. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Why don't you come and get filled? Why don't you come and get renewed? Why don't you come and get uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit? Amen. You might leave with something of God that will change your life, change your marriage, change your kids, change your home. Amen. Change everything about you. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to preach it. Not ashamed to teach it. Not, a, not ashamed to say it. Not afraid to declare it. I'm not afraid to live it. Listen, church, I speak in tongues. I have the gift of God. I've received the promise of the Father. And I pray that all Christians, regardless of denomination, will receive power from on high. Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Come upon you. One of the evidence that you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Power, power, wonder working power. Glory to God. Power, power, power to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Amen. People need to be delivered and devils, they need to be cast out. Amen. Brother, you need that power. Listen to me. Sister, you need that power. I need that power. Something needs to move us from our complacency. And having the dove is the answer. Having the dove makes all the difference in our lives. Churches without the dove are dead. They're dead. They're cold. They're lukewarm. Jesus said, I will spew you out of my mouth. And the word spew means to eject. God saying, I'm going to eject you, to throw out, to expel, or to vomit. A cold church does not please God. A lukewarm Christian, a lukewarm heart does not please God. But a church on fire, oh glory, hallelujah. A church on fire does something. A church on fire, that is what God delights in. A church on fire will make a disturbance. A church on fire is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hear me, young people, our youth today, I want to hear something out of you. 
I want to see something out of you. I don't want you just going to church or just being a part of different things in the church. I want to see the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. A church on fire, that's what God is looking at. A church on fire spreads the uh, word. They're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. A church on fire cares about people, and they care about souls. A church on fire praises God, worships God, and glorifies God. There's just something about a church that's on fire. You don't have to advertise it. You know it. You know it. Amen. I know it whether you're on fire or not. Uh, you know it, whether I'm on fire or not. And I just want you to tell you something. In my life, it's warming up. Hallelujah. I said it's warming up. I feel the Lord. I feel the presence of God. I have so many people coming to me throughout the week, different times and different places and different services, telling me that God is doing something in their life. God is speaking. There's a renewed presence. There's a joy. There's a love. There's a power. I said, hallelujah. They said, I'm so thankful God brought me here. God's doing something in my life. Hallelujah. That's good to hear. Thank you for that message, Pastor. God spoke to me here. The worship was so good. The presence was so awesome. All throughout people in the church. Now, here in this chapter of Genesis, we know the story about Noah who built the ark of God because of an impending flood that was coming upon the earth. Did anybody get a bowl? Amen. Oh, I'll use it. I'll use it maybe later. Hallelujah. Perfect. Amen. (laughs) Hey, I'll just set that right over here for a little while. All right. And uh, I'll just I'll just set this next to it. And I'll just put this over here with it. Amen. All right. Genesis, you just hold on. We'll come back to this if all works out. Now, uh, it, we see here that, that in this chapter 8, we, in 6, 7, and 8, we know that, that the story about Noah and the ark of God, and because the impending flood that was coming on the earth, that up until this point had never rained on the earth. I mean, never. Plants and vegetation was watered by the mist that came from the ground. And because all uh, of all the evil and all the wickedness on the earth, God would wipe out man out of existence. All those not on the ark would die. Genesis 6 and 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. Do you know that God can be grieved? Do you know that we can grieve him? Do you know that you and I can grieve God in his heart? So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth for I am sorry that I I have made man. One of the saddest verses uh, uh, in the Bible. I am sorry that I made man. But then listen to this. It said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Praise God that there was one man that God saw that had a heart for him. Of all the people on the earth, uh, God found a man. A man that loved God. A man that believed God. A man that stood on the word of the Lord. And the Bible says something beautiful. It says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I pray that God could say the same thing about us today, about His children today. I pray that we we would find grace in the eyes of God, that God would look and see a people that love Him, a people that believe Him, a people that obey Him, a people that have a heart after God's own heart. Then God could say that we have found grace in His eyes. Noah, Peter said, is a preacher of righteousness. He was a man of faith, a man of God. Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives would be the only ones on that ark of all the world's population, only eight people on the ark. But folks, let me just say this. There is safety in that ark. Can I get an amen out of that? There is safety. There is provision in the ark. There is salvation in the ark. The ark's a type of Christ. All those in the ark belong to God. All those in the ark were spared the judgment of God. All those in the ark were saved. Hallelujah. Genesis then 8 and 1 opens up by saying, Then God remembered Noah. 
Isn't that so good? Now, a lot of time had gone by. He had nearly 100 years, somewhere between 75 and 100 years it took him and his sons to build that ark. But then the Bible opens up and says, then God remembered Noah. Isn't that so wonderful? Isn't that gracious and wonderful and good to hear? Listen, there might be some of you here today, and you think that God has forgotten you. Some of you might have given up hope. You think that he doesn't know how you feel, he, or he doesn't know what you're going through. You might think, uh, maybe you might have thought that friends and families has forgotten you. You might be going through the ringer right now, but just know this, that God remembers you. Just as God remembered Noah, he also remembers you, for he is not respecter of persons. The Bible says his eyes are on the righteous. We are written on the palm of his hands. That's what the Bible says. We are written on the palm of his hands. Amen. That means that God has not forgotten you. Don't give up. You hold on to God. All hell might be coming against you. You might be going through the darkest time of your life, but you hold on because God sees you and God has not forgotten you, my beloved. The rains came, the Bible said, and descended upon the earth for 40 days and nights. Even water came out from the belly of the earth. Everything was underwater. There, there, there they are in the ark, only eight people on the ark with all those animals. It's hard for us to picture and imagine, but I saw uh, the replica of the ark down in Kentucky this past summer. How many have ever been down there, that ark down there? Uh, you know, and I, I found my wife wanted us to go down there for a long time, so we met Pastor Jerry and Sister Karen down there in Kentucky, and I mean, that thing was huge. It was just amazing. Pictures just can't describe unless you're there visibly, physically to see it. And back in Noah's day, they didn't have any intercom system. I wondered, and all those levels in that ark, and all that, play, how they communicate, and how they talk to each other, how they know what to do, but somehow they're able to communicate with each other. Amen. But after the end of 40 days, the Bible said that Noah opened up the window of the ark that he had made. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that God would open up the windows of heaven in our lives. And may God open up the windows of our heart where God can pour in each of us. Amen. Something of himself, of his spirit, of his blessing. Amen. Noah opened up the window. And then the Bible said that he sent out a raven. But then it also said not only a raven, but he sent out a dove the raven and the dove would fly around trying to find a place to land and if they couldn't find any place to land they would come back to the ark the Bible says something that's very interesting, Genesis 8 and 9. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, and she returned into the ark to him, that's to Noah. Now think about this now. The dove went out time after time, but it couldn't find a place to land. It didn't have any place to rest. Everything was underwater. No trees it could find, no mountaintops, no branches, no bushes, no buildings, no houses, no gutters to hang on to. You know what I'm talking about? Nothing. There was no place to land or to rest. And so Noah waited another seven days, and then he sent out another a dove again. But it came back to the ark and couldn't find a place to rest. But this time, the dove brought back something with it. The dove brought back... A fresh olive leaf. Hallelujah. You know what that is? You know what that is? That's hope. Hallelujah. Hey, man, there's something out there. Glory to God. The whole earth's underwater. I mean, they've been through the storm of their life, never seen anything like it in their life. I mean, you know, think about it. But now that this time, that dove doesn't come back empty-handed, but it comes back with an olive leaf. That's hope. And then Noah knew that the waters were receding from the earth, and so he waited another seven days. The Bible said that he sent the dove out, and this time the dove did not return. In other words, the dove found a place to land. The dove found a place to rest. It found a place to put its feet on. It found a place to live or to dwell. And throughout the scriptures, we see that it mentions the dove. In fact, the word dove is mentioned about 20 times in the entirety of the Bible. Not to mention the turtle dove that was used for an offering and sacrifice unto God. The dove, of course, represents something of great importance. The dove represents the third person of the triune Godhead. 
said, the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Spirit of God. And we see His active presence in the very beginning of the Bible. Genesis 1 and 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. I love it, church. I get excited about things like this. The Spirit of God was there. The dove was there. The Spirit of God was active. The Lord was moving in the midst of a dark time. Don't think that God doesn't know what you're going through in your life. You might be going through a rough time right now. You might be going through a dark time. But friend, God is moving and God is with you. He is with those that put their faith and trust in Him. Praise God. The dove was there. The dove was there. We see in the Gospels when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. He must fulfill all righteousness. And in this uh, we see the activity of the triune Godhead. There Jesus is in the water. The Spirit of the Lord is there. God the Father speaks. The Bible said when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Praise God. So we see my beloved, the activity of God. When John baptized Jesus, the Spirit of God descended upon our Master in a form of a dove, and John witnessed the Spirit landing upon Jesus. The Spirit of God was there. He came in a form of a dove. Oh, and there are some character traits about a dove I'd like to talk about just for a few moments here today. Amen. When I think of a dove, the first thing I think of is gentleness. You know, that's a quality character of the Holy Ghost. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Gentleness, having a gentle spirit and a gentle heart. But one thing about a dove, and I'll see those morning glories or those morning doves in the morning when I take off, you know, and they're out there eating some of the food that the neighbor puts out there in the alley, and I'll see those doves, but once I come around that corner, they take up and fly. They're gentle. I see that character about them. But not with a raven. You know, a raven is that black bird. They'll just kind of squawk and cock and make all kinds of noise, kind of get on your nerves. Amen. I mean, they're, you know, kind of like that crows, crows and Michael and I and the Rangers we go out camping, you know, James and Brother Tim, and, you know, get up in the about six o'clock in the morning, you're trying to get a little bit of sleep. You've been up uh, late the night before, kind of wore out from all the hiking, and all the swimming. But I'm telling you something, don't bring an alarm clock. Don't worry about you. You better bring some earplugs when you go down there to Lake Hope because there are crows going to start crocking about six o'clock in the morning. It's like they're in your, they're, they're, they say that we're in their territory and they're flying around and it's like we're, hey, they just get on my nerves that just aggravate the fire out of me and if I had a shotgun I know you're not allowed to bring one hey man I could use the excuse like that little girl did on my bus the other day she had a little blue crayon you know and some of the kids said she had marked on the back of the seat I said, you marked on the back of the seat. She started crying in big old alligator tears. She's a little thing, you know, just crying away. She's been on my bus for a couple years. She knows better. She knows the rules. And she looked at me. She said, Mr. Mark, it was an accident. <laughs> accident. I got up and I looked back there. She had a drawing of a tree, of a house, of a, a little. <laughs> I said, ain't no accident here. You did that on purpose. I didn't mean to. Amen. <laughs> Well, the devil made me do it. I had to talk to her mama and all that kind of thing, you know. Amen. But I tell you what, them doves, them ravens, they can be aggravating. But I think of a dove. I think of the uh, tenderness. I think of uh, a dove. Uh, you know, I think of gentleness. I think of tenderness. But a dove won't stay where it is not welcome. Did you know that? A dove will not stay where it is not welcome. A dove is sensitive. The slightest noise will cause it to fly away. It won't stay where it doesn't feel welcome. It won't squawk and quack and squawk and all that like a crow or like a raven. Uh, a raven is pushy. A, a raven is like a bully. A, a, a raven will run the other birds off, but not a dove. A dove won't do that. A dove is gentle. There's a story of a missionary and his wife in the place that they were staying at the time had a nest right outside one of the windows. And a pair of doves dwelled in the nest. And I, I read this out of a book from R.T. Kendall. And a pair of doves were right out there in the nest outside the window. But the husband noticed that every time that they got in an argument and raised their voices, that the doves would leave for some time. But every time that they were getting along and there was peace in the home and peace in the marriage, then the doves would come back and the doves would stay. 
I wonder just about every time people get in an argument in the church and there's fighting and bickering and backbiting and cutthroating and, and, and we're angry at one another and we're mad at one another. I wonder if that dove would stay here. I wonder if that dove would just fly away for a while until, until there's the unity of the peace of God, the, the, the bond of peace and the spirit of unity in the church. And we wonder, we go through the motions. And, uh, you know, we can have a raven service or we can have a dove service. We can have a raven life or we can have a dove life. Right, Chris? I mean, it's up to us. It's up to us. And, uh, you know, maybe the scriptures are trying to show us something about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like a gentleman and God won't make you and God doesn't force anyone and he won't make us love him and he won't make you seek him for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and he won't, he won't, uh, he won't make us pray and he won't worship, make us or force us to worship and that's a choice that we all have to make for ourselves. But the dove isn't going to stay where he doesn't feel welcome. It, it, it's easy to quench the Spirit of God in our lives or in any given service. The Bible tells us to not quench the Spirit. Yet we do it. Uh, sometimes we do it on purpose. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord isn't going to stay where there is anger and animosity. Uh, he isn't going to stay where there is willful sin. Uh, he isn't going to remain in a place where it's just flesh and entertainment that puts the spotlight on man and not on Jesus Christ. Uh, he's not going to remain in a hostile environment. Uh, and I wonder sometimes if the Holy Spirit is welcome in our services. Uh, I wonder if our hearts are open to receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, I wonder wonder if we're hungry for him. I wonder if anyone is thirsty for him. I wonder if we desire his nearness. I wonder if the dove is allowed to have his way in our hearts. Perhaps the dove doesn't feel welcome because of anger, animosity, jealousy, resentments, unforgiveness in our hearts. I wonder if some of us have shooed him away. We've shooed him away. Maybe the dove isn't in some of our marriages because there's constant fighting. You're not getting along with husband, wife, not getting along, kids not getting along. There's no peace in the home. Maybe it's just constant. You may wonder where, if the raven is there. Amen. Not the dove. Perhaps the dove doesn't feel welcome in our church politics. Maybe he doesn't feel he has a place to land in our religious hierarchy and our man-made religion. Maybe the dove doesn't feel welcome in our fleshly controlled services. Perhaps he doesn't feel welcome in some of our homes. I mean, you understand? One, a person that is full of God, a person where the dove is welcome, a person where the dove has landed is a person that doesn't desire the things of this life or the things of the world. You don't desire the honky tonk music and blues or the worldly music to fill your heart and soul and mind no no not if that dove is there because once you put that worldly earphone on I'm telling you that dove left that dove has departed when you watch the trash on the television that dove has flown away when you read books that aren't glorifying God that dove has flown away when you're in your car and you have a rage and fin start using bad words you shouldn't use that dove has flown away hallelujah you listen to all the worldly music you want, but you have no anointing. That dove isn't staying with you. He hadn't found a place to land. Oh, but you know, you want to do this and do that. But wait a minute now. My, my dad, when I was growing up, I'd say, Dad, I want to do this. I, want, I, want, I had all kinds of plans. I'm going to do this, do this, do this. Dad says, hold on. Son, don't get the cart before the horse. We want to do all kinds of things, but we've shooed the dove away. I said we've shooed him away. Come on, church. We're not living a consecrated life and a holy life unto God. We're not doing right. Heart's not right. You know whether your heart's right or not. I've gone to the Lord here this, this week. I went to the Lord this week. I went to God this week. I said, God... I said, my heart isn't right. I said, my heart isn't right. I don't know what to do about it. I said, my heart isn't right. I don't know what to do about it. I said, I can't change it, Lord. I don't know what to do about it, Lord. I said, God, I said, my heart isn't right. I said, you're going to have to help me. So I said, and, 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 and so I, nothing, I, no big bang, no big voice coming from heaven, no big explosion. I didn't feel the presence of God. Nothing like that. I'm just, I'm just saying to the Lord, my heart isn't right. you got to help me. My heart isn't right. you got to help me. My heart isn't right. you got to help me. And next thing you know, a couple of days later, 
I re- going through the day and I realized that I wasn't feeling in my heart that I was feeling. And I said, you know what? Something's changed inside of me. I, I feel better. I, 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 I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> amen. I, I, you know, but, but I confessed it. Oh, come on, church. You're not getting a dove. He ain't landed on you unless you confess it to the Lord. Amen. you got to confess it to God. You listen to all the worldly trash you want. You live like the devil if you want to, but you don't have the dove. I'm just trying to tell you. Don't you come in here with your little Holy Ghost, uh, uh, somewhat uh, alternative uh, uh, praise machine thing going on when you're not living right. <laughs> got a form sister sister marcia told me make that that sermon hot on the skillet amen let it cook amen amen she told it's all her fault folks it's all her fault i'm telling you, i'm getting tired of the foolishness i'm tired of it god's tired of it and i'm just telling you we don't have oh but we're pentecostal but you don't have the dove oh but we sing like pentecostals but you don't have the dove because you're living like the devil you're living like you love that world more than you love what god has to offer you Hey Amen. There's much more we can say about this, and perhaps in the future I will deal with it. But what caught my attention in Genesis 8 and 9 was when it said, But the dove found no rest in place for the sole of her foot. And I wonder today if the Holy Ghost is having trouble finding a place to rest. I wonder today if churches have the dove, or maybe they have a raven, and they call it a dove. Maybe folks are having a hard time telling the difference between a raven and a dove. But there is a difference. Oh, but they say they're both birds. Yes, they are. But they're not the same. There's no other substitute for the genuine. Most people people settle for a raven rather than seeking God for the dove. They'd rather not change and have the raven and have the world than to change and to repent and to consecrate their lives and have the dove. We either have the real or we don't. But don't say we have the dove when really you've got a raven. I mean, you know how them birds walk? You know. Sometimes that's how we are. I think in the Old Testament, God said they're stiff-necked. We as the church of God don't want a substitute. We want the real thing. We want the dove to descend upon us. We want the presence of God. We desire the Holy Ghost. I believe the dove is, is still looking for a place to land. He's looking for somebody to land on. Where can the dove land? We can look throughout the Word of God and see that there were certain times, people, places where the dove felt welcome. There were times when he landed on certain people in certain places. People that wanted him. People that needed him. People that were looking for him. Yes, I believe the dove is flying around today and he's he's looking for somebody to land on i know that just a few days ago act 64 conference in texarkana that pastor jerry was a guest speaker there man he blew the place up he lit it up i mean i mean the presence and the spirit of god and i talked to pastor jerry when it was all over he said six people got baptized in the holy ghost in other words the dove found a place to land you know what i mean it found a place to land you know where the dove is going to land you know where he's going to land number one on those who are hungry for him see god will meet anyone anywhere any place anytime if they're hungry for him doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter uh, where you're from he won't he, he won't land on a lukewarm heart that has no desire for god he won't land on one who has a passive uh, uncaring attitude he won't land on the one who is living a compromised sinful life but he will land on those uh, that are hungry for more of him some of you say you're baptized in the holy ghost but i don't see any evidence I mean, it's like there's no joy, no life. You know what I'm talking about. I remember after getting saved how the Lord showed me that there was more. God was telling me not to settle for less, but there's more. God began to show me about the dove. He began to reveal to me about the Holy Ghost. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm praying. I'm seeking. I'm up all night. I'm knocking. I was searching for the scripture in the scriptures a few months later on a Sunday morning service at the altar at Jimmy Swaggart Ministries in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I lifted up my hands to pray, and all of a sudden there's a sound of a mighty rushing wind. The dove found a place to land. He landed on one who was hungry, one that was searching. He landed the one that was seeking and praying. All of a sudden, I began to speak in other tongues. The Spirit of God gave the utterance. It is real. It is of God. It's a gift of the Lord. Paul said, we're not ignorant. No. Listen to me. He can do the same for you. Perhaps the dove is flying around today. Maybe he's flying in this church right now looking for somebody to land on. Looking for somebody to baptize in the Holy Ghost. Secondly, he'll land on those 
who wait patiently for him. Jesus told 500 to go in Jerusalem and wait, tarry, until you receive the promise of the Father. Only 120 obeyed Jesus' word. 380 went home, went back to their jobs and so forth. Uh, but all of the 120 went up that upper room, began to pray and to seek the face of God. They tarried, they waited, they anticipated. Everything else in life is on hold right now. I'm going to take a leave of absence. I'm on vacation now. The fishing can wait. The laundry can wait. Uh, the car can wait. Uh, they wanted God. Uh, they knew they wanted. They needed what God had to offer for 10 days. They waited. But on the day of Pentecost, the dove was flying around. The dove was flying around. He's looking for a place to land. And, and when, it, when it came to Jerusalem, he saw uh, about 120 people. He said, man, what's going on down there? I see something going on down there. Something good's happening over there. And the dove saying this. Now, I can imagine the dove saying, I think I'll go right on over there. I, I think I'll land on those people right there. I feel welcome there. I feel wanted there. Uh, they want something of God. They want something of the, I can hear their prayer. I can see them crying. I see their consecration. Oh, amen. The dove landed on those people. And the Bible said, suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire. And one, each one sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They all spoke in tongues. The dove found a place to land. Are you hearing me today? The dove found a place to land. I, I think the dove is going around all over the world. And he sees that congregation. And he sees that congregation. And he sees that congregation. And the dove says, I've got no place to land and then he f flies into word of life and he's looking around he said well I can't land there I, 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 that one's hungry that one's hungry that one's not uh -uh, I can't land there they can't get off their phones long enough to know anything about me uh uh no no Number three, he'll land on hearts that are pure. P Peter was led by God in a vision to go to preach at Cornelius' house. You know the story. Peter got up and he started preaching to the Gentiles and God was doing a work. And not only is the gospel good for the Jews, but good for the Gentiles. But as Peter was preaching Christ, as Peter was ministering the word of God, the people that heard believed in the Lord. They heard the message. They believed it. God saw their hearts and, and they must have been confessing. And repenting in their hearts of their sin. They must, I mean, their hearts must have been pure. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They'll experience God. They'll, God will manifest in their life. And the Bible said, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word. Glory to God. The dove found a place to land on the Gentiles. Hallelujah. I mean, blow the Jews away at that time. I mean, I'm not anti Semitic. I'm talking about the Bible. They didn't know that the gospel was good for the Gentiles, too. They thought it was just for the Jews. They thought it was just for them. You've got to understand what's going on back there. Their mindset, no way they're thinking, okay? Amen. But you know, don't hold it against them today. Amen. Amen. Like the media wants to do, hold something you did in the second grade against you right now. You can't run for president. You, 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 you said a bad word when you're in second grade. That's the way they're doing, man. That's the way they're doing. Amen. I mean, they were saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Listen, the dove found a place to land. Around 1903, 1907, a dove found a place to land on those at Azusa Street Missions Church in Los Angeles, California. The dove landed. People were being filled with the Holy Ghost. He found a place to land. He found a people that were seeking him. In the late 1800s, the dove uh, found a place to land and, 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 and to land and the people receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, known as the Welsh Revival. Revivals breaking out. People being saved. People being delivered from sin. Set free from alcoholism. Passed out under the, the power of God. The police would go by and they would smell the breath of those all passed out in the park and on the streets and sidewalks. And if they could smell alcohol, they knew that they were under the influence of alcohol. They passed out. They're drunk. But if they were passed out and they didn't uh, smell any alcohol, they knew that they were laying slain under the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the dove found a place to land. Hallelujah. Oh, many Pentecostal churches were birthed out of this. The dove found a place to land. And having the Holy Ghost makes things a whole lot better, 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 better. It makes for better prayer life. It makes for better word life. It makes for a better worship life. It makes Jesus more real. You love Jesus more. The Holy Ghost is needed for spiritual warfare. But it also makes things go down a whole lot better. Amen. 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 You know, uh, have you ever tried? Uh, have you ever tried? Eating flour by itself. Amen. All right. You know, 
This is my day. You don't think I can bake a cake. All right. All right. My wife comes in here on some Sundays. She said, what do you do now? All right. I need some volunteers. I mean, to tell you, I, I ain't letting you kids up here. You get this stuff everywhere except in your mouth. I, I, you know, I want you to take a, I want you to take a handful of flour and I want you to stick it in your mouth. I mean, just stuff it in there. Have I met you before? God bless. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry this is your first service. Come back. You might like it. <laughs> try this again. Just try. <laughs> April, do you want stick stuff some of this flour in your mouth? Just stick it in your mouth. Stick it in your mouth. Anybody? Why? It'll choke. It'll choke. I mean, I'd almost do it for an illustration. Should I? No. You new folks over there. No. All right. Uh, James. No, James. I'm getting around you. <laughs> that boy's crazy. That boy's a nut. I mean, he's crazy. I mean, I saw him move over there. That's just like the devil. He might just kill <laughs> I'm messing with you, bro. I'm messing. Morgan will do it. Man, you come at the right time. God's timing is. God's timing. I want you. I want you to take a handful of this flour and stuff it in your mouth and eat it. Folks, listen to me. Listen to me. It's a dry thing. You try to stuff that in your mouth, you'll choke and cough. And, I mean, it'll get all over the place. I mean, it's dry. But listen to me, my friend. You add a little bit of oil to that, and you mix it up in there, it goes down a whole lot better. In fact, it goes better if you add a stick of butter to it, add some salt to it, put some butter, salt, oil. Hey, man, put something in there, whatever it is. You mix it up, throw it in the oven, it comes out, nice tasting little cake. It's all moist and things like that. But you try to eat that flour by itself, it is dry. It is dry. It's got to have some oil added to it, my friend. It's dry and dusty, my beloved. Let me tell you this. Without the Holy Ghost, it makes for a dry sermon. Without the Holy Ghost, it makes for dry worship. Without the Holy Ghost, it makes for some dry Christians. Without the Holy Ghost, it makes some dry praying. It makes for a dry church. Without the Holy Ghost, it's like having a bowl of flour and you stuff it in your mouth and you choke on it. Hey Amen. Sometimes it gets so dry. I mean, we choking. God's choking. <laughs> I mean to tell you, oh, dry. Hey Amen. I mean, it'll choke you, but if you will just add a little bit of oil to that flour, it'll go down a whole lot easier. Maybe we just need to be refilled and renewed and rebaptized in the Holy Ghost. Morgan, if you'd come, then you might start praying better. If you would have some of that oil, you might start living better. If you drink some of that oil, you might start loving better. You might start forgiving better. You might start helping better. You might have a better outlook on life, a better heart, a better attitude. If you'll drink some of the Oh, amen. Oh, church, listen. The scripture says, but the dove found no resting place. That's what I'm seeing today. When I got saved and I... God showed me there's more, and God began to reveal to me about the Holy Ghost. I, I scared at first, I'll be honest. You're always scared of that which you don't understand. And so, I mean, I, I, I began to seeking God, and praying. And a couple months later, as I said, God came, the Holy Ghost found a place to land that Sunday morning. I mean, speaking in tongues of power, God. And, 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 I just, you know, I've been saved almost 28 years. And I've noticed, and Pastor Jerry's noticed, and Pastor Dwayne's noticed, and other uh, godly men that I've talked to, that I love and admire, that I uh, honor so very much, that has so many years ahead of me in ministry and experience. And I look up to them, and I learn from them, and they've all noticed, we've all agreed that in these latter days, 
It just seems that the dove is having fewer and fewer places to land. Fewer places. It's like he, you, you come to church, but you're not coming to half church. <laughs> yeah. You bring your Bibles, but you're not coming to, to learn what they say. You bring your Bibles, but you don't come to read it. You just, you just come to church, but you're not having church. You have no desire to have church. And, and, and the dove flies around, and, and, and he says, I, I, I can't find any place. And he has to go back to the ark. I mean, sometimes he can't even come back with an olive leaf. I was like, there's no hope. There's, there's no hunger, no desire. I pray, you think, you think the Holy Ghost, you think the dove is flying around here at Word of Life today in this sanctuary? And do you think that he, he, he can find a place to land? Can he land on you? Some people say, preacher, I don't want him to land on me. Well, then okay, he won't because he won't force himself. Well, I've known the Bible all my life. But you're dry as a bowl of flour. You walk around like an encyclopedia. But you don't know this. You don't have this. We're no good without this. You, you can't bake a cake. You can't make good cornbread. You, you can't make good biscuits. My mama from California, we moved to Mississippi. I was 14. She's a California girl. She came to Mississippi. She thought she'd try her hand at making biscuits. Well, their biscuits all right, as hard as rocks. I don't know, them country ladies said they, she didn't put enough, uh, we call it lard. What's the other stuff? Crisco, that stuff in there? Not enough shortening, not enough oil. Not enough oil makes for a hard biscuit. Not enough oil makes for a hard heart. Makes for hard people. I pray that when the dove looks upon us, that he feels welcome in this place. I pray he feels welcome right here. Would you stand with me? And would you worship the Lord together? And would you do this today? Would you, would you be willing to welcome the Holy Spirit? And I want to open this altar up. And I want to give all of us the opportunity to come and to seek the face of God. And I want us come and if we need to, confessing our faults and confessing our hearts and confessing our sin or, or confessing whatever it is that you know. You know it. You're smart. You're smart people. You know if there's something in your heart and life that's not right with God. Confess it like I did to the Lord this week. I said, God, my heart isn't right. God, my heart isn't right. I know it isn't right. And so God began dealing with my heart. I thank God. I still want God to continue to do so. But I want you to come today and I want you to make yourself willing willing and available. And I want you to say, God, I, I want I want the dove to be able to land on me. I want the dove to land on me. I make myself available. I want the Holy Spirit. I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want the infilling of God. Amen. You're going to have to cry out to the Lord for it. You're going to have to pray for it. You're going to have to do the seeking yourself. You're going to have to cry out to God. But the dove is flying around and it's looking and it says, I can't land there. I can't can't land there. I can't land there. Oh, but there's one. I'll land there. There's another one. I'll land there. There's another. I'll land there. Hallelujah. Tell me, tell me, is the scripture talking about you when it says the dove had no place to land or to rest its foot? Why aren't we all at this altar here today? Why aren't we all at this altar crying out to God? Why aren't we all here and saying, Dove, land on me. Dove, land on me. Maybe some of us got a raven, but we need a, we need a dove. We need the dove. We need the dove. Hallelujah. We need the dove. Come and land on me. Oh, Lord, pour out the oil on me. Oh, God, I want to be a church that allows the dove to move in my heart and in my life. I want the dove. Amen. If this won't move you, find you another pastor because i got to go to a place where the dove is allowed to land. If you want, that's fine. God will take care of me. But I'm telling you, we need a church where the dove is allowed to land. A people that allow the Spirit of God to move. Hallelujah.
Amen. Don't chase out the dove. Amen. Don't invite the raven. Don't let the raven in. Uh Uh-uh. No, no. I need the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. Come on, church. Our youth, come on. Step out of your pew. I'm talking to you. Step out of your pew. Come on, folks. Get out of your pew. Get out of that thing and get over here and worship God. Come and worship God. Make yourself available. Dove, land on me. Dove, land on me. Come on, folks. You need it more than anything. We can become as dry as a bowl of flour. Dry, dry, dry. But come, come and seek God. Come out of your pew. Come out of your place of safety. Jump out of the boat. Walk on water. Seek God. I want the dove. I want the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. If I have to talk you into it, you don't have it. If I have to try to coax you into it, you don't have it. You don't have it. Maybe you'll never get it. Amen. Maybe there's no hope. But I'm telling you, amen, for those that do, the windows of heaven are open. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want the dove. I want the Spirit of God to land on me. I want the Holy Ghost to land on me. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pour the oil on me. Pour the oil on me. Oh, how I want the Lord. Baptize in the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want the Lord. I want the Spirit of God. I want the dove. I don't want the raven. I want the dove. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, church, can I get some others to come help us to pray? I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove to land on me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want the Spirit of God. I want the dove. I want the oil. I want my heart to to hunger for Him. I pray in the name of the Lord. Touch my brother, Lord. Land on him. Land on him. Land on him. Land on him. Land, I pray in the name of Jesus. Land. Land on my brother. Land on my son. Land, I pray, Father. In the name of the Lord. Land, I pray. Oh, God, we worship you. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, land on me. Oh, I want the dove to land on me. I want the dove to land on me. I want the dove to land on me. Hallelujah. Land on me, God. Land on my marriage. Land on my home. Land on me, God. Land on me. I make myself available. Amen. Get out of your seat, folks. Get out of your seat. Come and seek God. Amen. You want the dove to land on you. Make yourself available. Make yourself available right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Oh God bless me. Oh God fill me. Oh God land on me. Land on me. Land on me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Land on me, Jesus. Land on me, Jesus. Land on me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Land on me, Lord. I want the dove to land on me. I make a place for the dove. He's welcome in my heart. He's welcome in my life. He's welcome. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Amen. I want to see some of our youth up here. Come on, youth. Come on up here and pray. Come on, young people. Get up here and pray. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Land on me, God. Land on me, Lord. Holy Ghost, land on me. I want your welcome here, Holy Spirit. You're welcome. Purify my heart. Make my heart right, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome in my life. You're welcome in my heart. You're welcome, Lord. You're welcome, Lord. Land on me. Land on me. Land on me. Land on me. Land on me, Lord. Land on me, Jesus. Land on me, God. Land on me. Oh, Lord. I invite you to land on me. 
I invite you to land on me. Land on me. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. Oh, I want the dove. I want the dove more in my life than ever. I want the dove. I want the dove more than ever. I want them. I want them. I want all of God. And I want them to have all of me. I want the dove. The raven. You don't belong in my heart. You don't belong in my in my life. I want the dove. 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 I feel the power of God. Listen, folks. You don't want to miss it. I feel the power of God. I feel the Lord present. I want the dove to land on me. Hallelujah. Oh, God, rebaptize me in the Holy Spirit. I want the dove. I want the dove to land on me. I want the dove to land on me. I want the dove to land on me. I don't want the raven. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. Land on me. Land on me. Land on me. Land on me. Hallelujah. Get your praise back. Get your joy back. Get your peace back. Get your power back. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, land on me, Lord. I cry out to you. Land on me, dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. I want the dove. And he sees your heart. Hallelujah. You be filled with God. You be filled with the Holy Spirit. You be filled with Jesus. Oh, his presence fills you. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. Oh, I want the Holy Spirit. I want life. I want your power. I want your blessings. There it is. There, the dove has landed right here. The dove landed right here. Here's the dove right here landed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dove, I want you. I want the Holy Ghost. I believe and I want the dove to land on me. Hallelujah. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the dove. I want the Spirit of God. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Spirit. I want the dove. I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Quench not the Spirit. Don't push away the Spirit. Don't push away the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want the dove. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. I want him to land right here. I make I make this place a landing pad for the dove. He can land on me. He can land on me. He can land on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. He can land on me. He can land on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. He can land on me. Amen. Hallelujah. He can land on me. He can land in this church. He can land right here. He can land right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I make, amen, this place a welcoming place for the Holy Spirit. Folks, some of us are just so shy. Some of us are just afraid. He's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. But I promise you, he wants to land. And the Holy Ghost goes out every day, all the time, looking for a place to land. The dove goes out looking for a home to land in, looking for a heart to land on, looking for some teenagers to land on, looking for some Christian church folks to land on. Oh, hallelujah. He is. It's up to you. But i got to go to a place that wants him. You know what I'm talking about? I have to have a place that wants him. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want him. I want him. I want him. The Bible says quench not the spirit. Sometimes we quench him by 
resisting Him. We quench Him because we won't, we won't take a step towards Him. We quench Him because there's anger in our heart. There's bitterness. There's selfishness. There's jealousy. All this kind of stuff. Works of the flesh. The raven done got in there. You need to shoo that raven out. Shoo that raven out. Shoo that raven out. Say, raven, you don't belong here. You're just squawking and quawking and all kinds of problems. You're just causing all kinds of racket and noise and flesh and everything like that. Raven, you don't belong here. Get out of my church. Get out of my heart. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my home. Get out of my kids. Get out of my life. I don't want the, I don't want the raven here. Just a black squawking bird. I mean, I know, I know that... I know he's good for Elijah and brought meat and bread. I get that. I get it. But right here, he's good for that. But he's not. He, it's not the. It's, he's not the dove. He's not the dove. Is what I'm trying to say. The raven is not the dove. Most folks got the raven thing. They got the dove. It's not the dove. It's just the flesh. <laughs> well, that's that's all I got. That's the best I can do. That's the best I can do. That's it. God is not done. God is not done with the words that have proceeded out of the mouth of our minister. Oh, Lord. He's not done, is he? Speak this in your heart. Speak this in your mind. Yes. That's right. That's right. Do not go out of this place today without him, even though the Lord knows that we look hmm. at our watch and say, Oh, it's getting late. It's getting late. I need to eat it. I need yes. to eat it. Eat his word. Yes. Eat his word. Yes. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we stand together today? Make ourselves available for the dove. God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God, let us take to heart what was said. Let us take to heart your word. Lord, I pray that the Word of Life Church would be a place where the dove feels welcome where the dove feels like a place to land and reside and dwell and stay. I pray that in each person, in their life, in their home, in their marriage, on their jobs, wherever they are, that the dove feels welcome. I pray the dove feels welcome when the things we look at, talk about, the things we hear, the things we listen to. Lord, 
I pray that Dove feels welcome. Welcome. Welcome in the kind of music. I'm tired of the foolishness here. Some of it. I'm tired of some of it. I just don't know what it takes to cause us to consecrate ourselves to God. We have the raven. If you want to mix in with that world and take on that image of that world, then that's the raven. But if you want to separate yourself and truly live your life for God, you'll have that dove. He'll come. He'll, he'll land. So, Father, I pray, oh God, stir our hearts. I believe the dove came and landed on some folks today, and I believe the dove came and landed, didn't land on some people today. But, Lord, I know that you're looking, you're searching, you see the hearts, you try the hearts and the reins of men. So, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Almighty God, as Noah opened up the window of that ark, I pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven for those that are hungry for him. I pray that you would bless those people. I'll pour out, I pray, on those folks and let them have revival and a strength and a power and a joy. And the virtues of God and the characteristics of the Spirit of the Lord, the fruit of God, I pray. I thank you, Lord. I pray your blessing on the body of Christ. And, Lord, that you would, I pray, uh, draw our hearts here tonight for service. That, Lord, I know you're probably weary of excuses, but I pray that you'll draw hearts. I pray this and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We thank you for coming today. I really just enjoyed, I felt the power of God in this message. I, I, I want to see you hungry. I want to see you desiring the Lord. God wants to see that. And uh, I pray that God would bless and do a mighty work in your heart and your life. Love people. Give yourself out for God. Sacrifice yourself for people. Pour yourself out for others. Don't be selfish. Don't be self-centered. Pour it out. And you watch God bless you in the process of that. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. Hope to see you back tonight. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Amen.